Hi, I wanted to walk you through the new Grammarly editor. They rolled out a lot of updates that I'm really excited about, so I wanted to share some highlights here. If you've used Grammarly before, you'll know that there was not any rich text editing, so you couldn't bold, italicize, underline, and now you actually can. So all those options are down here at the bottom. So you can bold, um, this is a heading, so that would make the whole line a heading. Words can just be bolded, italicized, and underlined and you can also do some bullet points and a numbered list. This icon is to clear formatting so if you've done something you want to get rid of it that will clear all formatting. You can also get a word count right down here so you can choose between words, characters, how long it will take, etc. And now this assistant, the sidebar, looks different. It still gives you the same great analysis of what you've written. It's just broken down. So if you just wanna see what's correct and not correct, you can click on correctness. That will only highlight the alerts that are based on correctness. So spelling, grammar, and punctuation. Clarity is one of my favorite ones because it points out words that are unnecessary. And I tend to use things like really and very too many times. So that's very helpful for me. One other thing to note is if you need more information about what this error means, you can click the three dots to get more information and open up that card. And it will give you some suggestions for fixing that error. If you wanna minimize it, you just press that little up arrow to make it less. Engagement will remind you of repetitive words, like I purposely used repeat multiple times in the sentence, so it would be pointed out to me and it would tell me to perhaps change it to another word. And then delivery, maybe I have a preposition at the end of the sentence, some other things like that. Now correctness is gonna be the big mistakes, and then these are really proofreading type things, which is what brings Grammarly to the next level in terms of helping you edit your writing. In general, you can just click on all alerts and it would show all the different types of alerts. And these colors are color coded to being correctness if it's red, clarity if it's the little blue icon, engagement if it's the green icon, and delivery if it is that purple little dot. If I wanna make a change, so if I wanna accept this change, I just click on it and really will go away. If I wanna accept this, which I have to read it, this doesn't make sense. If I happen that same word enough times, that's not what I was going for. So yes, they are correctly pointing out to me that I shouldn't use the word repeat and repeat again, but happen would not be the right word here. So you do have to be careful when you're using Grammarly to accept and reject changes based on what makes sense to you. I can choose to dismiss this if I want, and in Grammarly, you can double click on any word and it will bring you synonyms. So I can double click on that word and see, do they say anything that would work? If I copy that same word enough times, I probably would just say if I use that same word enough times. Grammarly should be with a capital, so I will accept that. Hopefully it will. If I repeat enough times, that shouldn't have been another sentence. So again, I can just go through and accept or reject the changes. Once I do all of that, I can look at my overall score right here. It will tell me my word count. It will also tell me my readability score and my vocabulary score. I can download a PDF report and that will give me a PDF of on the first page my score and then at the bottom it will be whatever I had written. And then as a footnote, it will show me any of the errors that are still remaining there because I didn't reject or accept these two alerts. So it just shows me that there. And so that can be a way of if you're a teacher, you can have students turn in this report and then maybe comment on you know why they chose not to accept this change. Because again, as you're using Grammarly, you have to be mindful that not all of these changes should be accepted. You might lose the context of what you were trying to say, but it's a super helpful way to thoughtfully proofread your paper. There are these goal settings, so you can choose your audience and how formal you're writing, and then they have this tone and intent, which is still experimental, so they're not actually doing anything with that right now. I have just been keeping it on the defaults, which are general, neutral, general. 
but if you are writing a specific paper, you could change these. Finally, there's this plagiarism check, and you can check to make sure what you're writing has not come from another source. Let me show you how that works. So this is something I copied and pasted directly from somewhere on the web, and so when I do the plagiarism check, I can see the plagiarism 100% and it matches with this source. So that's a good way for you to just check your paper as you're writing it. Of course, you're gonna use little pieces of things that might come up on a plagiarism checker. Hopefully your teacher has taught you what's okay and what's not okay not all the time will will your work be a hundred percent original but as a student you can use this plagiarism check to just make sure that you are doing a good job making your writing original finally you can upload a document so say you had a word document you can upload it in the grammarly editor to check your paper you can also start a new document from there and then if you would like to download you can download your entire paper as a word document right through there you can also just print and that would give you a nice printed version of just what you've written and you can copy the whole thing to your clipboard like that so those are the basic features here and then just one reminder i would add grammarly chrome to your browser and then if you're on any web page I would make sure that these two things are checked that would mean that if you double click on any word on any website so say I'm on this website when I'm learning more about the new Grammarly editor if I double click on any word it will give me a definition and some synonyms and that's all powered through this Grammarly Chrome extension so you can turn that on and off see if I turn it off that doesn't happen anymore if I turn it on Boom. I can easily get definitions right there with just a double click, which I find really useful. I want to take you to a Google Doc and show you how Grammarly works in Google Doc. Please take note that Grammarly is currently in beta in Google Docs, and what that means is they're still working on it, and there are some kinks. It's not perfect yet, but it will be improving throughout the year. That's what it means that it's in beta. So basically when you have your Grammarly installed, you should see Grammarly always come up next to the URL bar in Chrome. When Grammarly is checking, basically you'll see down here in the lower right corner that you have 11 errors or 11 things that they've caught. Now, if you click on that 11, you'll see that it's in beta still. And so the features here are not as rich as they are if you are in the actual Grammarly editor. So if you're writing a full paper, I still recommend at the end of all of this that you copy and paste it into grammarly.com and I'll show you why in a moment but this is a great way if you're writing in a Google Doc for you to check as you're writing so here you can see that grammarly is picking up some errors here it's saying I should remove the comma if I click on it that would accept the change or I could ignore the change or I can just leave it be if I want it just will be read and you can just ignore it yourself and so this was some verb errors that copied and pasted so a lot of these sentences don't even make sense but you can see that it corrects any grammar uh, mistakes that you're making it will also catch any of your spelling mistakes I don't want no pudding says I don't want any pudding I want no pudding so this will catch all your basic spelling and grammar mistakes and also if you enable that double click thing then you'll be able to get some synonyms which can be very helpful in your writing but let me just go ahead and show you why I say that a lot of times you're better off in the actual Grammarly editor you'll see that when I paste it into the Grammarly editor I get a lot more feedback here so I get things like repetitive word which can be very helpful I get possibly confused words. I get more feedback about what error I made and how to correct it because if I click on the card it gives me an example and it tells me what the correction means so I can learn a little bit more. Another thing you can do you know if there's a particular paragraph that you're struggling with and you know it doesn't sound right in your Google Doc you can just copy and paste that one paragraph into Grammarly, workshop it and then paste it back into Google Docs. So those are just all options that I wanted to show you but just make sure that in this little bar, everything is enabled. So hopefully that helps you get started and that you'll enjoy using Grammarly to improve your writing and your proofreading.